abduction is widespread in Uganda today. An abducted child could be right in your neighborhood. We are looking at human beings treated like animals. Children are held captive, tortured, and even castrated. These are our children, sisters, and brothers, as well as mothers, fathers, husbands, and wives of tomorrow. What happens to them in abduction is all the darkest things that you could ever think of. Wonder. Yes. The family is the backbone of society, and more so, children are perceived as not only gifts, but the future and prosperity of the human entity. Every child has its rights to basic needs, protection, education, health care, and many more. It is the responsibility of every adult to protect their children, but unfortunately, that is not always the case. Sadly, children have been subjected to countless forms of physical, emotional, and mental abuse. In Uganda, cases of child abduction and sacrifice have been rampant. We cannot talk to the many little souls that have gone through this heartbreaking experience and thousands of families that have come face to face with this evil kind of behavior. But today on the show, we have Karen Lewis, the project director for Champisi Child Care Ministries, who among many other activities, carry out physical, emotional, financial, and spiritual rehabilitation for children that have been abused and support for their families. Next on the show, Karen takes us through real life stories of child abduction. How are you, Karen? I'm fine, Justine. How are you doing? Good. How did you discover these children? We discover these children in different ways. Sometimes it's through reading about the episode in the newspaper. Sometimes we hear it on the, on the radio or through other media. Sometimes we have other organisations contact us and say that they've heard of a child. Could we go and make a report um, of the two children that we work with at the moment? One we found through the newspaper, another one was recommended through another organisation. I, I know that there are many, many cases in Uganda. At the moment I have been researching 75 different cases and each story is heart-wrenching all by itself, and each story is different. While cases of child abuse are making occasional appearances in the press, many more horrifying acts go unreported. Sad to say, most of these acts are perpetrated by adults who are trusted by their young victims. This deprives the children of options of where to turn for help and guidance. Oftentimes, the offending adults entice the children with small gifts and then cover their acts with threats of causing bodily harm to the child or banishment from the home. Even in cases of child abduction and sacrifice, close relatives are not exempt. It's sad to see that sometimes it, these cases, it's parents, the father, the grandmother, the grandfather, the uncle, the maid, a neighbor, take these children. It, it's not always somebody that they don't know. It's quite often somebody that they do know. Take them and sacrifice them. They mutilate their bodies looking for wealth, looking for good fortune, looking for to be able to have children for themselves. And, and it's just very sad. So Karen, what's George's story? Three years ago, when George was just two, almost three, he was taken by a neighbour and offered sweets. Come, come with me, George, I'll give you sweets. So he went with the neighbour. This man was known to the family, was known to George. He went off with the man and the man took him into the bush and totally mutilated his genitals and just left him in the bush, dying. He was found several hours later by a neighbour's child and rushed to Malaga Hospital. He has undergone several operations. He went from Malaga to Kampala International to Korsu Rehabilitation. He has had a penis made for him from a forearm flap. You'll see the scar on his left arm. And, but at the moment he's using a catheter for urination because the 
urethra going from the bladder to the penis doesn't work. So shortly he'll be going to Australia to have surgery to repair that damage. As in the case of George, some abducted children have been lucky to barely escape with their lives, but the scars both physical and emotional remain forever. The resultant trauma makes it very hard for them to readjust into society and lead normal lives. Five-year-old George Mukasa from Busia district reveals the horrific details of his abduction, torture and even castration. George. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm I'm sorry, Mobulida Cocaveni. Catiboya Calocula, mammy. Ned Daddy. O Colotia. Ogamba Caven in Acuzai. Edwin Yacuzai. Eh? Ovacula Cova Sanuka. Waganda Boba Sanuka. Kati uzanya na haba na haba lao. Hmm. Muzanya chi. Hmm? Muzanya mpira. Hmm. Eee. Anya kunyiza. Hmm. Omubi. Hmm. Omubi aliwa yeni. Mkula. Hmm. Olie ya kusala. Hmm. Eee oyo ya kunyiza. Hmm. Omsaja ya wa msonye wa. Hmm. Eee. Hmm. na msonye. Hmm? The chilling details of George's abduction involve George's castration by his attacker, as well as the pain and discomfort George has to endure passing out urine through a tube. Not forgetting the torment he goes through till present day, as a little child, he keeps having dreams of his attacker peeping through his bedroom window. <laughs> George, what has this part of George's life ripped him off? He's spent a lifetime of trauma. He's gone through a lot. Um, he's separated from his family more often than not. He's undergone many operations. He still has several to go. He's been able to, unable to go to school. And in the future, he will not be able to father children. He will not be able to have a normal 
a marriage-like relationship. And I think that's sad. Why won't George be able to father children? I thought, you know, he's going to go for these uh, surgeries and everything. The, the surgery will repair the urethra, which is the, the tube that runs from the bladder to the penis so that he can have proper urination. Unfortunately, the doctors were unable to recreate a scrotum, which is what a man needs in order to rear children. That's, that's pretty sad. It is. When a child survives abduction with injuries, the family too faces a lot of challenges in their quest to help this child. Many times, the medical bills are astronomical, as the child may need operations and specialized care. This takes its toll on all family resources, whether financial or emotional, as ultimately, the family has to take care of its own. So when, did, when does George ever go home to his parents and his people? Okay. That, that can be a very sad story too. His, his parents went through a very, very hard time while he was in hospital. A lot of people um, used them, used the situation to their advantage and um, they feel sad for the child but they don't cope very well. So he spends most of his time with his grandmother. Mm. And of course his grandmother is an elderly lady who can't always cope with him either. So he spends some time with us, some time with her, and very, very little time with his, with his parents and his siblings. Karen, you've done research about what we're talking about today, mm. and you're dealing directly with it. Yes. How can we make sure that other children don't have to go through the same trend of things? I think that Ugandan families need to be aware of where their children are at all times. They need to make sure that their children are well looked after. Little children stray, can stray very easily, no matter what country it is. In Uganda, I see children have a lot more freedom than what they do in the Western world. We, we are very protective of our children, and I think it's time that Ugandan families were more protective of their children also. Mm. I've also come across many, many cases where children have been abducted but found, been found unworthy for sacrifice. If a little girl has her ears pierced, she's unworthy for sacrifice. If a little boy has been circumcised, he has, he's unworthy for sacrifice. Of course a little boy can have an ear pierced as well, which the witch doctors will just find him unworthy because they've already bled. They want a child that's pure. It's only a, a short little pain, but if it protects them from being killed or mutilated in any way, shape or form, then it's worth it. But children, people really need to keep an eye on their children. Who are they playing with? Thank you so much, Karen, for the work that you do with Champisi Child Care Ministries and thumbs up to anybody out there that is doing something similar. Thank you for your personal connection with these children and I know that God has given them a mother somehow and a best friend. We pray that they will be fine and I believe that if me and you and everybody in the society, the police, the families, the neighborhood, the society, we all did our work as regards child safety someday this evil kind of behavior will be cleared out. And thank I can't you. thank you enough. Thank you for talking to us about this and God bless you. Thank you for the opportunity, Justine. Oh, you're welcome. Okay.